Welcome to Laravel API development with Vue.js single page application from scratch. The following episode is going to be an excerpt from the full course now available on Udemy. If you're interested in developing robust Laravel APIs with a front end built on Vue and Tailwind CSS, then this is the course for you. We go into great detail talking about things like authentication, testing, Tailwind CSS, Vue.js, Laravel, PHP unit, and so much more. So I hope you'll join me for the full course. Go ahead and click on the link in the description to get sent to the Udemy page where you can purchase the full course. I hope you enjoy this episode. With all of our tests in green state right now, it's time for us to do a little cleanup refactor that's going to help the rest of these tests stay nice and clean and consistent. The first thing I want to do is we have this array right here. But if we really think about what this is, it really is just a valid array of data. And we use it throughout our tests. We used it there, a portion of it, and we used it here again. So what it seems like is that this should live in its own method. That way we could just call it when we need it and modify it for each test, making it really, really obvious what we're actually testing. Because check this out for one second. This name is required test. Yes, we know and we remember today that we deleted that name key, but is somebody else in our team of programmers going to know that? It's not very obvious. There is nothing here that is telling them that, yes, in fact, the name is required. Imagine that we had 50 fields. Would it be obvious then? Probably not. So how can we rewrite this so that it's very, very obvious? So let me show you the way that I handle this. So we can take this array. Let's go ahead and cut it out completely. And let's create a new private method that I will just call data. Let's go all the way to the bottom of our test and write a new private function, data. The only thing that this is going to do is it's going to return that array of valid data. That's all it's doing. So I've replaced the actual array with just a call to that data function. And we know that all that does is returns an array. OK, let's run our test again. And we're still at green. So that was a successful small refactor. So how about this? How can we modify and reuse that same method? To do that, we can use the PHP function for array merge. So array merge will take any number of arrays and merge them together. Now, if there is a repeated key, it will take the last one that it finds as the actual true value. What is going to happen is that if we pass in an override for just name, not only are we going to make it really obvious that the name is what we're actually testing, but it's also going to work using this new function that we have down here. So let me show you how it works. We're going to remove this array from here altogether. And then let's do a call to array underscore merge. So as the first array, let's use that array of valid data. Again, this one right here. Then let's go ahead and on the fly create another array where we actually override a name and set that equal to just an empty string. So now let me divvy this up into a new line so it's easier to see. So we have array merge and we're passing in two arrays. The first one is going to be a complete set of valid data. But then we're going to pass a second array that's going to get merged in with this first one that simply has the key of name overwritten to just be an empty string. Essentially, we are invalidating this valid data by removing the name key. OK, so let's check out our test. Let's run it again. We're still at green. But now we have the added benefit that it's very obvious that the name is invalid because this is all that we are seeing. We're seeing, OK, we've got some valid data and then we're going to invalidate the name field. Great. Let's do the same refactor for the email is required. So let's go ahead and remove this. And in a new line, again, we'll do array merge this data. And then as a second array, let's go ahead and override the email one for an empty string. Run our test again, still at green. Very good refactor. This is going to be great for a lot of the APIs that you write. You're going to do this over and over. So now let's take it even a step further. This test and this test are almost identical. The only difference is just the fact that we have name here and we have email here. 
And of course, I'm going to want to do the same thing for birthday and company. So we're going to have to repeat the same exact test two more times, giving us a lot of repetition. So let's rewrite this into one test that tests all four of them in a single test. So let's do this. Let's write a new test and say fields are required. This is going to be my general required field test. So what we could do here is we can, of course, have an array of fields. So we know that name is going to be required. We know that email is going to be required. We also know that birthday is going to be required as well as company. We know that. So then let's go ahead and use Laravel's collections. So let's collect that array. And then on that, we can call the each. So each will accept a callback and it's going to give us the field that we are working with. So of course, this is going to be equal to name, then it's going to be equal to email, birthday, and then finally to company. So inside of here, then we could do this exact same code that we have here. So let's copy one of these and then bring it into here so that we can modify it as we need. So every time we call one of these fields, we're going to go ahead and hit that endpoint of slash API slash contacts. Then we're going to call that data and then we need to invalidate one of the fields. Now, luckily for us, this is going to get passed into fields. So we can replace this with field. And then we are also expecting the key of field. And then, of course, we still expect there to be no contacts at all. Does that make sense? So we've essentially encapsulated one of these tests into an each function that will run four times in a row as opposed to having four separate tests. So why don't we run just this one test here and let's see what we get. So first of all, of course, session is missing error for birthday, because if you remember, we've only really taken care of name and email, but birthday and company are still left behind. So let's pull open the context controller and let's do the required on the birthday and then let's do required on company. And then we get a green test. So now we know that this is working. So we can actually erase all of these tests right here and still retain the same test level. We're still testing that each of these fields are required. Now, the added benefit to this, of course, like I said, is it's just very simple for us to know which fields are required. If somebody new comes into our team and is taking a look at this test suite, they're going to look at this method and say, OK, fields that are required. OK, so the name is required, the email is required, birthday and company. It's very easy to understand and read our code. So there's no reason for big comments or anything like that, because the way that we've written our code, it is very obvious. So with that refactor, this test is that much cleaner. As you can tell here, we only have two tests and they are testing quite a bit. Just as another house cleanup, we can actually get rid of exception handling and our test suite should still be green. We don't need that anymore. Notice that we only have three tests, but we've really only written two. Remember that Laravel ships with a special one inside the units directory, but we have 17 assertions. So a lot of assertions in a couple of tests and everything is staying nice and clean. So what else do we need to test? Well, there are two special fields that we are not properly handling just yet. And that is that this should be a valid email. It should not just be a string, but it should really be an email. So we need to validate that the user is not just passing gibberish, but they're actually giving us an email. And second of all, we have this birthday. Of course, we know a birthday is a date. And right now we are storing it as a string in our database. And there is a specific column that we can use and we are not using it right now. So in the next episode, let's handle the email field properly and turn the birthday into a timestamp.